Unlike married couples, common law relationships follow a different set of rules when it comes to property law. In today's video, I'll be providing a quick overview of how Ontario law defines common law relationships and some useful tips for common law homeowners to limit their legal exposure. What's up guys? If you're new here, my name is Chris Chu and I'm a real estate lawyer here in Toronto. On this channel, I'll be covering some useful legal information, tips and insights into real estate law here in Ontario so that you can feel better prepared when tackling your next real estate transaction. Now, before we get into this video, I'm obligated by the Law Society of Ontario to let you know that all the content on this channel is for informational purposes only. Nothing on this channel should be construed as or should replace legal advice. The content on this channel does not form the basis of a lawyer client relationship. So, to follow up on my last video on the laws surrounding matrimonial homes, I'm here to ruin another holiday vibe by talking about common law relationships on family day. <laughs> now, I want to start off by saying that I'm in my 30s right now. And as I'm sure you're aware, it's around this age that most of your friends are either shacked up or married or popping out kids left, right, front and center. One of my biggest pet peeves as a lawyer is when I hear a couple that I know that's decided to move in together and they tell me, Oh, we're common law now, or we're practically common law. Maybe I'm just a huge law nerd, but most of the time they're entirely incorrect. So with that said, let's set the record straight first and define what it legally takes to be considered being in a common law relationship. So Ontario's Family Law Act defines a common law relationship as two people who are not married and have cohabited continuously for not less than three years, or if they're in a relationship of some permanence, if they are parents of a child. The details are pretty straightforward. Three years of continuous living together or some level of seriousness in a relationship provided that they have a child together. Now, if you're in a long distance relationship or maybe some sort of complicated on again, off again relationship, or you're acting as a kind of adopted parent to a child of a person you're with, it may be worth a quick consult with a lawyer to see if you're considered a common law couple since there may be some exceptions. So I'll be very blunt when I say this. For the most part, here in Ontario, common law relationships do not have the types of automatic property rights that you do with married couples. Put simply, if a common law couple splits, each person keeps whatever they happen to own, including property. Practically, what this means is that unlike legally married couples, if one partner is not on the deed to the property, they don't automatically have a say on whether or not the property is sold, nor can they automatically prevent themselves from being kicked out, or even have the home saddled with debt. Now, obviously there are exceptions to this, but it's usually under very specific circumstances, such as safety issues for one of the partners, or if the non-title holding partner is contributing a significant amount of money to the property, and that partner who owns the home is deliberately cheating them out of getting some sort of financial gain. In any event, these issues are beyond what most real estate lawyers are capable of handling, and you'll need to hire a family lawyer. Now, regardless of how unfavorable the laws are or lack thereof for common law couples, this hasn't stopped people from buying homes together. Given today's exploding home prices and changing social norms, it's much more common to see young couples living together and skipping the whole marriage thing or at the very least, putting a pause on it until they're more financially stable. With that in mind, I think it's useful to go over some tips and options that would potentially minimize your legal exposure. So let's say you're dating someone and you hear this. Babe, I already own a place, so just move in with me. You can just give me some cash each month to help me with the mortgage I'm already paying. You should reply, Absolutely not. First off, if you're in a common law relationship and your partner is the only person on the deed, you should consider hiring a family lawyer right away to draft up what's called a cohabitation agreement. A cohabitation agreement can handle how a couple will divide their assets and debts should they split or if one person passes away. It can also cover topics of how costs are split in the home or if the property is sold or mortgaged or whether the other person needs to sign off on any big decisions regarding the property. Imagine you had said, Oh honey, I love you so much, blah, 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 here, sure. Here's some money for your mortgage. Well, if your honey decides that they've had enough of you and boot you out, if you didn't sign a cohabitation agreement, good luck getting your hard earned money back. Let's flip this example a little bit. Imagine you're in a common law relationship with a Tinder swindler and you're the only person on the deed to the home. If the swindler charms you into taking out a mortgage so that they can use the money for you to help them run from, well, their enemies, well, now you're an enemy of the bank. The benefit of a cohabitation agreement is that the non-title holding partner has some legal documentation to fall back on should things go sour and the other partner is being a jackass. 
Even for the partner who is solely on the deed, a cohabitation agreement can be beneficial to set the tone of expectations from the partner who is living with you. Now, in all honesty, the most preferred method of a home ownership for common law couples is to actually legally buy the home together. This ensures that big decisions regarding the home are actually restricted to being made together. At the very least, both parties have a registered equity on the property. It's a lot harder to skirt responsibilities when your name is in the government registry. Now, even in this instance, I still recommend drafting up what's called a co-ownership agreement. It's essentially the same thing as a cohabitation agreement. A co-ownership agreement takes the form of a business leveled approach. Two people are entering into a business agreement together to buy a piece of property. It can discuss who pays for what, what the initial buy-ins were, and what the payouts are if they sell the property or end the relationship. What's super interesting about co-ownership agreements is that they can also be used with friends and family members. It can be for two or more people if they all decide to pitch in to buy a home together. Now, in all cases, the most important thing I can say about issues regarding family law, especially for common law couples, is to hire a damn family lawyer. As much as real estate lawyers are useful for advising you on the property law issues, there's also a lot more intricate and meaningful items that a family lawyer will be prepared to assist you in, especially if assets and debts you share with someone are complex or if children are involved. Having a hard conversation about your future, putting your plans into writing, and spending time and money into hiring a lawyer could potentially save you from a ton of problems in the future. They say time heals a broken heart, but interest on an unpaid loan still racks up. Well guys, I hope you found this brief overview helpful. If you haven't seen my previous video dealing with matrimonial homes, make sure to click on the link at the end of the segment. If you found the content helpful, please click on the like button and subscribe. Guys, as an added bonus, if you're looking to speak with a family lawyer here in the GTA, I put a link in the description below to a firm that I've worked with before. As per the Law Society's guidelines, I need to let you know that I do not give or receive any referral fees for this shout out. I personally just like them as lawyers, I think they're great, and I love helping connect people. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you soon.